Hello, how are you? Welcome to CEO where we promote empowering information about Africa and Africans. In the last um, four videos, I've been focusing on Nigeria, looking at the and bad governance protest. It ended yesterday. It was a 10 day protest in August, August 1st to August 10th, and it ended yesterday. And I'm here to put forth some reflections and key messages that emerged for further reflections for fellow Nigerians and Africans and those and the friends of Africa and Nigerians around the world. I start by standing by my head in silence to the 21 to 40 Nigerians who were killed you know, who were basically killed in the protest. The number is still being confirmed. Among the number we know, of, of course, that a 16-year-old was killed. It is so sad when a 16-year-old cannot stand up and speak and demonstrate for a better, a better Nigeria, which he can grow up with hope and dreams for his future. I want to reiterate again that um, that the election started, the, the protest started peacefully and um, you know heavy handedness in terms of repressing the, the the protest led to violent response and we had 21 to 40 still being confirmed who were killed we stand with the family as a nigerian i stand with other nigerians to make sure these lives are not in vain I'm grateful too that Nigerians love Nigeria. They will not let Nigeria go astray. I'm grateful that the protests are done not to destroy Nigeria, but to build Nigeria. Nigeria will arise and rise from this protest to be better and greater. I know. And that's why I speak of hope. In the midst of, 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 of the mourning we have for the lives we lost, in the end, bad governance in Nigeria, there's hope. The hope emerges, number one, in terms of the key messages and the learnings from this. Nigerians can be powerful when they put their mind on, on something. Nigerians are resilient, but there's a, an end to their resilience. You can't fool them. I find it interesting, a key message that given the warning and the threat that have been thrown at Nigerians before August 1st, Nigerians went to the street. Given the warning at intervals from between August 1st and August 10th, Nigerians went to the streets. The youth, they spoke up and they did it non-violently, peacefully, clearly, and very consistently. Now, there are three messages I'm taking from this, I think, for further reflection. Number one, this protest, the end bad governance protest, clarified one thing. When Nigerians say they are hungry, hunger, it means what the ruling party, what the power that be, what the establishment you understand is that Nigerians are not saying they just need food to put in their stomach. They are hungry for good governance. Hunger is not about don donation of rice or wheat. They are hungry for good governance hungry for being able to be in their country and build their dreams, invest in the country. There must be a space for the younger generation to build Nigeria. There must be that space. It cannot be as it was before. August and bad governance protest has started something, a revolution. That's how it starts. It's no longer that. Nigerian, the Nigerian youth don't just want to eat corn, yam, and whatever, on rice. They want to dream. They want to have a vision for Nigeria too. They want their vision to be realized in Nigeria. We're talking about a country of 220 million people and even more. The future has to be here. When Nigerians say they're hungry, they're hungry for good medical services. People should not die in hospitals from preventable diseases, preventable accidents, in your treatable accident. It's the, the public service system in Nigeria need to be addressed. And that notion and boastful tone and the sense of entitlement for, of Nigerian ruling parties going abroad for medical treatment and holding the country down because they're getting treatment abroad need to stop. And Nigerian leaders need to be embarrassed and ashamed. You cannot be the leader of a country and the medical services is in disarray and you comfortably, conveniently just throw abroad to get medical treatment and we should and, and please i'm not in any political party in nigeria i do not subscribe to any but i speak the truth i relocated to nigeria and i see the the current party of all progressive people's party all people's progressive congress the ch 
challenges faced right now in Nigeria did not start from President Bola Ahmed Tinibu. It did not start from the president right now. We must remember, the, eight years ago we voted in a president who basically took three months to go get treatment in the UK. And the country basically were waiting for him to get his treatment and come back and sign off the budget. The country basically was held to ransom because the president was unwell. He didn't get his treatment in Nigeria, he went abroad. He went abroad to get his treatment. So when we look at Tinubu, Tinubu just was present at the time where the crisis peaked. He just participated in a norm. You know, this is how it's been. I just get in and continue. But what has happened is that Nigerian had, Nigerians had had it. Now, rice, the donation of rice, when Nigerians say they are hungry and they give them rice, they must understand that they are hungry for good roads. Now, we hear of situation where the cabinet says they have to buy new cars, costing literally about a million dollars, over a million US dollars, some 150 million, you know, million naira, because the roads are so bad and it's risky to drive in them. But they are comfortable with the rest of Nigerians driving in them. When you donate rice, rice does not address the lack, lack of electricity. Just because you've given a bag of rice to Nigerians who say they are hungry, it does not address the, the bad roads. It does not address lack of electricity. It does not address the lack of petrol. It does not address the fact that even when there's petrol, Nigerians line up on the streets for days to get petrol. When Nigerians say they're hungry, they're hungry. To reduce the cabinet, to reduce the ministries, the cabinet, from 48 to, 30, to 37, to 32 actually. There are many ministries that are completely irrelevant. One of them is the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. It is a joke and an insult to Nigerians. That is one key message that emerged. And another is that delay tactics and diversion tactics failed, did not work in this end, end, end bad governance protest. There are no foreign intervention. The protesters did not come from Niger. The protesters are Nigerians who are frustrated, have had it with the, 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 the bad governance, lack of basic services. These are the Nigerians that went on the street. There were men who declared they'd rather be shot down on the street than die of hunger in their homes. The hunger is not, we did not see any emaciated Nigerian protesting. They were energetic. It tells you one thing. Man shall not live by bread alone, it says in the Bible. There are many other requirements by which we live. Food in our stomach is not just what life is all about. The ruling party, the establishment, whoever, whosoever they are, stop dumping rice on Nigerians when they say they need a future in Nigeria. A future in Nigeria is not about rice. The diversion tactics did not work. There are no foreign interests here. There are, no, there are foreign interests in every part of the world. We're all neighbors. We look at each other and look out for each other and maybe sometimes look out, again, out against each, each other. It, it, it did not have anything to do with the end bad governance. All that were tactics to divert from the critical issues. Nigerians want more, deserve more, have earned more, and have been patient for too long in asking and demanding for a better life in Nigeria. A life where a few do not live at the expense of the majority. A life where a few do not assume that they can get away with blatant theft of public resources with, with impunity. That's simply what it is. It cannot continue anymore. That's a key message. I watched the Northern youth stand on this protest and I was really impressed. I watched the image of a tear gas thrown at some community in the North, youth protesting, and the young person picked it up and threw it back to, back to sender. Believe me, that is a powerful, powerful act. It should tell something to the establishment. Change got to come. It's got to come in a collaborative, peaceful way, or it will come in a way we will not want and expect. Three messages. The, the, I know what are the outcomes of the 10 days. 
there's already an initiative to have conversations with the ruling party on strategic changes, the outcome of which we don't know. We must concede to the fact that the current government ruling party have ex expressed interest increasingly to dialogue for change. Yeah, and I could give some suggestion. Reduce, give back some measure of oil subsidy. Give some back. Is the right thing to do. Give two years of a plan that Nigerians will be aware of or to stagger the level at which oil subsidy will be removed finally. Ensure Nigeria starts, <laughs> you know, start producing its petrol in Nigeria. Dangote must be su 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 supported to have the refineries building. We want to go further. There are five refineries, crude oil refineries in Nigeria. They are dysfunctional. In two years, Nigeria should stop refining crude oil outside Nigeria. It's just an embarrassment. And, and I want to finish here a key message. In the midst of all this happening is the issue about around Russian flag. And I want to explain it again. Nigeria took about $127 million, not in cash, but in donation of food grain from grains from Ukraine in the midst of war. Ukraine is a population of 37 million people in war. Nigeria is a country of at least 12, 220 million people not at war. We have a um, governance crisis in Nigeria, but we're not at war. Ukraine, in the midst of war, donates grains, 25 metric tons of grains to Nigeria. And Nigeria takes it, and it makes the news round. This was in, in February, March. It's an embarrassment. Nigeria is not a, a nation of humanitarian caseload that rice is dumped on it when it calls for, for change. You give, just give them a bag of rice. Then you have Ukraine in war donating to Nigeria, and Nigeria takes it. You know, that kind of, the, the way Nigerian youth and Nigerians have been treated is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating. And that's what Nigerians hunger for. The message is that when Nigerians say we're hungry, it's more than food. We're hungry to dream in Nigeria, to build a future in Nigeria, to expect electricity in Nigeria, to run a small, medium enterprise in Nigeria successfully, to travel on the road without fear of accident, to farm without insecurity, without being attacked in a farm. That is what we hunger for. We hunger for peace. We hunger for prosperity. We hunger for justice. We hunger to, work, to support Nigeria to rise to, to the greatness we all know it can be. But for the meanness, small-mindedness of some agbaros in, um, in power. And in fact, it's an insult to agbaros because they do very good work. They, they, they are focused in this zone. But if you, if you can do it, do it. If you cannot, I say again, Nigerians, when Nigerians say they hunger, they hunger for justice, they hunger for peace, they hunger for a government that is responsible, they hunger for an electoral process where the right leaders will be elected into office, they hunger for lack of corruption, they hunger for leadership that is actually responsive, they hunger for a Nigeria where the youth can dream and, and, and participate in building Nigeria for the great country it can be. This and bad governance in Nigeria has been an action of hope. Thank you.